I am really excited to have my next guest join us. She is a super talented artist who just dropped a brand new album called Nightmare on Elmfield Road. It is close. And there Hi. she is. Hey, thanks so much for being here. Of course, thank you for having me. I love this aesthetic, this, this glow that you have about you. This is better than that uh, sunset, four o'clock, five o'clock glow. Where are you checking in from? Oh, I'm in London at the moment, so I've got a like nighttime, nighttime scenic view. You, you have a very orange glow to you and it's, it's just <laughs> the perfect it's aesthetic. <laughs> is this the same uh, apartment that you've been living in ever since you moved at 18 years old? No, I know. I've, I've been like, I actually started doing Airbnbs when I first came over. I didn't have like my life sorted out. So, I mean, oh, I've wow. loads of places. Yeah, this is, this movie is like my like, place, maybe. I don't know. I've lost count. What have you learned about yourself during this time? Um, I mean, I feel like I guess it, it's, it's kind of coincided with my existing kind of life growth I suppose but for me I've I've kind of learned that um you know I've I've needed to work on myself a bit I think um I've needed to work on the way that I kind of talk to myself and the way that I view myself and my self-esteem and I think that really slowing down and not being able to kind of throw myself into being super super busy all the time has really shown me that like you know that's something that I need to work on. I, I read somewhere that there were a lot of things that you were dealing with from the things that were going on regarding the debut album, the touring, the work involved and the pressures, expectations. Is, is that a fair assessment in terms of putting those things in a box and not only the expectations of others, but of yourself? I suppose I've always been like very self-critical. Um, especially for my first record, I think from an artistic perspective, I feel like that really held me back. So going into this record and the process of making this record, I wanted to change that kind of perspective. And I wanted to go in feeling less like I had to be putting this kind of weight on myself to just be the most perfect. Everything has to be perfect. Everything has to be like the greatest thing or it's not worth doing. And I wanted to try and kind of change my perspective to being more like, it's just all about feeling. It's all about trying to curate a mood um, and curate perspective and work from that angle rather than trying to over perfect. When you were going through the promotion and touring of the first album, a lot of nice words were written about you. A lot of people gushed and, and I was a fan as well as part of that. As you were going through that, were there things, were there voices in your head saying, I don't deserve this and I, I shouldn't be deserving of any of these accolades or, or nice words or things like that in, in a way, imposter syndrome? Yeah, hundred percent, like a thousand percent. Like I, I still feel like even now, like I feel like when you have these kind of like thought processes, like so ingrained and like built within you, you almost have to constantly be working to make, to be like counteracting it. If you know what I mean? Like, especially when I was like doing the first record, I think I hadn't even really started on like my kind of journey, if you will, of like trying to understand my like thought processes and how that impacts me on a daily basis and how I like talk to myself and a hundred percent for the first record, I'd be like up on stage. I'd be like, I bet everyone here just thinks I'm like really shit. or like, I, yeah, honestly, like my thought processes, I think were quite toxic. Um, and that's, kind of something that I have to just constantly be working on, I think, to really be like, you know what, this is not, like, there's the difference between what you think and, like, what is reality and trying to constantly, like, balance that. I think we all have that, since you're bringing mm. this up. You know, we all have that voice in our head, like, oh, man, why did I do that? Why did I say that? And then, obviously, everybody's built differently, and so they handle it in different ways. Um, mm -hmm. When you were growing up, did, were these things kind of just pushed down because of the things that you were doing in life? Was it that your parents kind of helped to uplift you, tried very hard to uplift you versus uh, having a conversation about, oh, you did poorly on exams. Don't worry, baby, you, you, you can do better next time. I, I don't know, I'm just pulling out a, an analogy of sorts, but you know, I feel like that sometimes we have that built in at a very young age and then it just you know gets worse as we get older 
I think maybe I suppose like um, I I 100% even like when I start to learn more about like once you kind of start identifying these feelings, you kind of look back and you understand like, oh, I've always thought like that or I've always had that process. Like I remember growing up and being very like aware of my um, pulse and being very like obsessively thinking all the time, like, oh my God, is my pulse going to stop? And I would just always think about it and I would be like seven or eight. So I always remember having these kind of like, thought processes that were like like kind of anxiety things that were always there and I can now kind of identify that as like well that's just kind of the way that my brain functions I suppose and I just have to learn ways in which I can be like constantly helping myself to like work on that and keep myself on a good track with it. You released a few singles leading up to the album and I was like watering at the mouth as each one came out um, you know, Manic is one of my favorites. Uh, Better is probably one of the standouts for me. All the song titles are one word. Was mm. that purposeful? Was that something that just sort of came about halfway through and you just wanted to continue? What was the thought process there? I think because like, especially when we were writing in my brain, it was all about trying to like find, like when I like, like write lyrics, I, I think of them almost as like textures and how you're going to be able to like balance out a sentence by like throwing different things in that are going to bring like different curvature to sentences. And I think um, with the one word titles, it became very much about like, there's something just very like blunt and cutting about a one word title. And there was a there was a couple of titles that we decided to like rename and we were like, we have to make this part of a very like concise concept. I think um, it just feels quite like medical to me to have everything like one word titled. It's very like like fragmented and and it's almost it's almost and, it's almost scientific. It's almost as if you cut all the pieces of your brain into various sections and then said, "Okay, manic, better." Exactly, and also like even like when we were thinking about like singing and phrasing and the way that I was going to be singing things, everything was like, "Okay, we're going to do like vocal layers. We're going to do one that's like very spoken, one that's like dead tone, one that looks like this, just to bring like different textures out and and have kind of like weird like." forced kind of happy tones and sections and a lot of it is exactly like you said it's about making it feel very like scientific and almost like horror film creepy in a way um, <laughs> so that's what the one word title thing was about <laughs> and then hence the name of the album nightmare on Elm elmfield road elmfield road what is the significance of that particular street uh well we wrote where the studio was where we wrote kind of like the beginning songs for the record um, was like obviously on Elmford Road um, and it just became like kind of the hub of like the defining songs of the record um, and so it just felt very fitting but also there's like this kind of like mural that you stare out from <laughs> so the studio is like on the road and then you come out the front and we'd always go out the front and like just like chain smoke and like chat and be staring at this like really intense, creepy, like dreamy mural. And it kind of started the beginning concept of like, okay, well, if this is like the road of the world, the like void, the kind of like scape of my brain, um, this is kind of foundation for it. This is like where it lives, um, which is also kind of tied into a lot of the aesthetic stuff, like the butterfly visualizer and stuff is all about this kind of like Elmfield Road um, defining location, so. I'll admit, I wasn't creeped out by it, but I certainly was in a whole new world. I feel like every song takes me to a different world. So yeah, it may not be creepy, but it definitely evokes a dark kind of sentiment for me. So you did your job on that one. Yeah, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, Sonic I think- for me, it was about trying to like taking these like feelings of anxiety, these things of like your brain and create like, what does that look like? What does that sound like? How can you like show that to people? Well, I can't wait to see this live. I can't wait to see you in various costumes with the 3D visuals, the LED screens, whatever it's going to be. I'm here for it. You did a great job on this album. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you.